Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. So I want to come on here and talk about all the Breakfast Club drama. This has been the most requested video that I've gotten while I've been at YouTube Black. So I can't wait to spill this tea, okay? So what's going down is this. If you guys do not know, all of this drama started back on October 3rd, okay? So Gucci Man posted an old interview of when he was on the Breakfast Club back in 2016. And basically, he accused Angela E of being on his damn peen, okay? And of course, Angela E played it off. She acted like she didn't know what he was talking about and Gucci man basically busted her out and was like you know what you were asking for my hotel room and you know you were on my dick and all this other stuff and so he posted that video and then proceeded to say that he was also banned from the breakfast club so I want you guys to go ahead and check out what he posted and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary so Gucci man says wow so you mean to tell me the breakfast club banned me for this hashtag truth hurts hashtag get off my dick no, we was cool. I was not on your dick. Stop you it. You be text me what hotel you was at. Oh! All right, so you guys just saw what Gucci Man posted. So then after that, the Breakfast Club's Angela Yee and DJ Envy decided to respond back to it. So Angela Yee, at the beginning of the Breakfast Club segment, she goes on to say that she usually doesn't respond to negativity. You know, she keeps to herself. But meanwhile, you run an entire show called Rumor Report, okay? You're claiming to mind your business all the while reporting live from other bitches' businesses, okay? I mean, let's keep it real. That's what I do, too. You can't say that, you know, you just keep to yourself and you don't involve yourself in anything when you run a segment, you know, spilling other people's tea. So, basically, during this episode, her and DJ Envy, they're addressing the whole situation with Gucci Man, and they're also taking calls to see who believes Angela Yee versus who believes Gucci Man. And Angela Yee's basically saying that, you know, Gucci Man is lying. Lying. Um, he kept saying it was lip service. He was not on lip service. He was on a show called The Morning After and Melissa Ford wasn't there. Like she's speaking about all these nuances as if it changes the entire conversation. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this clip of DJ Envy and Angela Yee talking about the situation. Check this out and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. Swing by, is that true? Of course not. I don't even have Gucci Mane's number to text him. So, you know, and look, maybe he thought I texted him. I was looking at some of his old tweets. And when people say, why would Gucci Mane lie? Gucci Mane has had a history of lying. We have these old tweets where he talks about a lot of different women. And I'm not going to repeat them because it's very disrespectful. I'll repeat them. Give them to me. But he talks about. That's part of the court. I have to repeat them. All right, you want to see it? This, yes, this is uh, evidence A, B, and C. I have to repeat them. I have to let the people know because people don't know what you're talking about. What did he say? Can you pass me those tweets, please? Okay, and make sure you read the last tweet that uh, is on the last page now, this when is you all read alleged. all of these. No, they're not alleged. He really tweeted these. Oh, okay. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> and he did apologize for these tweets after oh. he admitted that he lied. Okay, he says, me and Waka F Nicki Minaj. That's nothing. All right, then he said, F G Z Tip Gotti, uh, Waka Nicki Minaj. He says, uh, the last one, or the last page, uh, Iggy wanna suck my D. Uh, I had a threesome with Keisha and a white girl as Coach K in Orlando. Uh, Fantasia hit was good. Drew was taking Okay, this is disrespectful. Uh, all right, it? I'm just reading it. Too. It's not me. I'm just reading it. I'm just reading well, it. Well, anyway, these are all things that uh, Gucci Mane tweeted out himself personally. And then, was there an apology? Uh, he said, I'm addicted to lean and that ish ain't no joke. I can barely remember all the things I've done and said. However, there's no excuse. Yet somehow he remembers a text from me where... No something involved, but I he's saying that I texted what hotel are you at? But he remembers that. Okay, now I seen the Jasmine brand posted something last night about uh the real reason that allegedly that he's mad at you. Now what is that from? What does that stem from? Um, so allegedly, according to the Jasmine brand, a source told them that Gucci Mane has an issue with me because of an interview that we did with Yo Gotti. And they posted the interview. Let's play a clip of that. You bangs your partner's girl. Damn, Gotti, <laughs> man. You ain't my friend, man. But that, that was your, but that was your girlfriend, it. though, right? Wasn't that like Gotti said, Envy, my partner. Oh, I, I know, know that. that was your wife. I ain't know that. Mm -hmm. like, I ain't know, like, you know, like, you in love and all that. Yeah, like, yeah, I got you, I got come you. Come on, man. You yeah. know how the gang go. Mm -hmm. Shorty the one told me she used to mess with home. Mm -hmm. Like, I ain't know that. Oh, she told you, but it was too late. You was already. No, I don't say it was too late, but I mean, like, yeah, I guess it was too late. But <laughs> she told me, she like, you know, I used to talk to sis. sis. I'm like, yeah, they're my partner. But did that deter you? Like, oh, well, that's my partner, so I can't, you know. No, I made sure she knew that was my partner. All right, wow. Okay. All right. There's well, more, right? 805. There's more? Yeah, here's some more from the interview with Yo Gotti that I guess has Gucci Mane upset. 
to this day. And I guess he felt some vendetta toward me. Oh, what about man. the last tweet that he sent out when he was just acting all crazy on Twitter and all of that, and he called you out again? I was just, from that point on, like, I was just laughing at home, though, because, like, what I knew, to me, on that day, there, I think the world seen what I had already knew. Wow, I guess Angela Lee has all her receipts. <laughs> Let's go to the phone lines, 800-585-1051. Who's lying? Angela Lee or Gucci Man? Hello, who's this? What's your name? Antonio. Uh, hey, Antonio, who's lying? Uh, Gucci Line. Why do you think Gucci's Gucci lying? Have a history of uh, lying on like five or six of these people a couple years ago, and then apologized about it later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, yes, yeah, that did happen. He did uh, admit that he lied and that he was on lean, and it has messed up his memory, and he doesn't remember anything. All right. Well, thank you, sir. 800-585-1051. Right now, we are in Breakfast Club Court. If you just joined us, Gucci Man released uh, something on his Instagram where he took a shot at Yee and said he was banned. From the Breakfast Club. Now, I don't know about him being banned. I didn't ban him. Charlemagne didn't ban him. So it would be up to Yee. And Yee said she did not ban him. Charlemagne said that he's not banned as well. No, he is not banned. And, sh- and but Angela I do want to say what, receipts. what this did make me realize was how important of a platform the Breakfast Club is. That somebody would be this upset that they would go on social media and try to be disrespectful yet again. Now, Gucci said he was because banned. Because they think they're banned from the Breakfast Club. Angela Yee said he's not banned. Gucci Mane said he did lip service before. Angela Yee said that is not true. He did a show called The Morning After. Gucci, and Melissa Ford was not on that. She's never met him. Gucci said that you texted him. What hotel you at? Angela Yee said that is not true as well. So we're going to the phone lines. Hello. Good morning, Matt. So we're asking right now. We're in Breakfast Club Court. Who's lying? Gucci Mane or Angela Yee? Uh, Angela Yee, I love you to death. I love you, but I'm gonna have to say you lying on this one, Angie. Why you say that? It's a video of Angela Yee interviewing Gucci, and this is this is Fat Boy Gucci. This this Fat Boy grew up. Right. And she's telling him how deep the, the the Asian vagina is. Right. That that was the one on lip service, uh, right? Uh, uh, it might have been. I don't know. It Wrong. actually was what not was on. Service? That was not lip service. That was a show called The Morning After. It says it on there. The Morning After, all across the screen. Yep, says it on the screen. So that is. And that's the interview sir. that he allegedly did with me and Melissa Ford. Melissa Ford was not there and never interviewed him. You got all her receipts this morning. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So what I find funny about that whole situation, and I like Angela Yee, I have no issues with her. I got a chance to meet her. But what I find funny about the situation is that she can address nuances like, oh, Melissa Ford wasn't there. Oh, it was the wrong show. But she's not talking about the comments that she made on her show. Regardless if it was lip service or morning after, what she said to Gucci Man was kind of, you know what I'm saying, thirsty. She was definitely flirting with him. And then she proceeded to say that Asian women, because she's half Asian, have deep coochies. You know what I'm saying? So I thought that was a bit much. So to me, person, if you're going to volunteer information like what your coochie feels like, in my personal opinion, you're definitely flirting, okay? Because if I'm telling the dude that my shit is wet and tight and deep, Bitch, I'm trying to get some of that damn peen, okay? Anyways, y'all go ahead and check this out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. <laughs> no, we was cool. I was not on your dick. Stop you it. You be texting me what hotel you was in. Oh! Never. Oh! Like that. Never. <laughs> Gucci's here. He lost his wallet last night, so he don't have no ID. Catch your ass out right here. Now, let me, how did you end up losing your wallet? You had it in your pocket? You think somebody uh, took it? I don't know. Somebody, no, nobody took it. My, too, too many too many people around me for somebody to take something from me. Maybe it was somebody around you. Man. Damn. Listen, can't nobody take <laughs> shit from me. Ain't nobody never took nothing from me. I just took life. something. You didn't even feel it. Shit, you can take it. Can, can, <laughs> can you take it? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sure. You know what they say about little girls, especially Asian ones? Fat puss. <laughs> Is that what they say? You know what that's say? I was going to say deep. Honey. All right, so you guys just heard that clip of Angela Yee flirting with Gucci Man, talking about how deep her stuff is and, you know, how Asian women got deep coochies and all this goofy stuff, right? So my thing is, why is she not addressing that particular comment? Even one of the callers busted her out about that. And her only response is, oh, that was the morning after. That wasn't lip service. But she's not responding to what she said to him. Regardless of the title of the show, that's irrelevant. To me, in my personal opinion, she was definitely flirting with Gucci, okay? She was definitely trying to get some of that damn goo wop, if you know what I mean, okay? So anyways, so after Gucci Man's post on Twitter went viral, Charlemagne the God reached out to him behind the scenes because I guess Charlemagne the God has now started his own YouTube channel where he's, I guess, trying to be like Vlad T 
TV and others, and he wants to interview celebrities solo dolo, okay? So he decides to do an interview with Gucci Man. And so about 53 minutes into the interview, Gucci Man starts going in on Angela Yee. He goes in on DJ Envy, says he wants to slap the shit out of DJ Envy because, you know, DJ Envy was being really disrespectful during that segment by reading old tweets that he said about people when he wasn't in his right frame of mind. Um, and he also said that if DJ Envy can go around confronting people like Jesus and Miro about his wife, he's going to get the same energy when he sees DJ Envy. So Gucci Man definitely went in. I want you guys to go ahead and check out this clip check this out and i'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary how often does, does gucci apologize often word oh you wrong you wrong i didn't apologize to angela Yee because i didn't you know i'm not and i hated that she said that i was gonna apologize to her but i don't know where she got that from because i didn't i didn't do nothing to her mm -hmm. so i didn't feel like i was sorry you know what i'm saying but if i was wrong i would say i'm sorry and just for the record man i didn't do i didn't listen i mean no disrespect to that girl i was not trying to humiliate that girl or embarrass her no kind of way. You know, I was just defending myself, showing, hey, if you telling somebody that I'm banned from the radio station or declining, it's, this is what gave me the decline. That was People are going to see this and be like, he must be banned because why, they not, in the, uh, man, <laughs> why they not in the studio? But for the record, he's not banned. I don't even know where that came from. It came from that punk ass bitch, man. And DJ Envy. He's a pussy, too. Envy did it, too? Envy's pussy, man. Pussy. He was scared. To, wasn't even scared to come. You know he's scared. Where he at? I didn't know he was supposed to be here. He wasn't gonna come. He wasn't gonna come because the day they did that people's court thing and you wasn't there, mm -hmm. he was there. Him and uh the girl, whatever. So he ain't had the nuts to come after he did that. I knew it. I was gonna confront him too. I'm gonna say, hey man, you know, you got something to say to me? I just wanna see what he was gonna say. Cause he seemed like he had something he wanted to say to him. I don't think it's an issue. So I'm gonna give him his, you know, I'm gonna give him his face to face because mm -hmm. I ain't no man him had no issue. But I do got an issue with him too. I got an issue with him now. I'm gonna step to him. I'm not saying. Just like he stepped to him, the people were talking about his wife when they came up there. Yeah. He confronted them. Dina Zamero. So I'm gonna confront him about what him and Angela did. And if he come at me wrong, I'm gonna slap the shit out of him. But it's just on him. It ain't gonna be his first time getting slapped. What about um what about Waka Flock and OJ the Juice Man? OJ still my OJ still my guy. Me and Waka, we talked. We got past our differences. We had a conversation. So that was that was uh that was big of us. What about when uh, when you went on the Twitter rant and, and the, the women you was getting there, like Nikki and... Uh, what, what I apologize to Nikki and she accepted my apology. We got past that. Or, that's big, I mean, that's bigger you to be able to do that. Hopefully you can do that with Envy and Angela one day too. All of y'all can just get on one good accord. Man, listen, after they disrespect me the other day and played that interview by my wife, fuck that. That's Angela, you and Envy, you just pussy. I'm going to see him. I'm going to see him. He's going to stand on what he did. He better bring that dog he be talking about. All the time, you push that. Go <laughs> Talking about a motherfucking dog. You better bring that motherfucking punk ass dog. I'm gonna get y'all on the phone together. Nah, I, I ain't got nothing to say. I'm gonna see him. I'm gonna see him face to face. If his pussy ass can, he can listen. You ain't even had the nuts, man. You got kids, man. You put out the nuts to stand next to the man that you said the shit about, man. He pussy, man. What, what did he Straight say? Pussy. I didn't. I didn't hear the whole conversation. Go back and listen to it. Yep. You can run, but you can't hide. That's the old Gucci. Honey, when I tell you Gucci Man was not here for the foolishness, he was not here for it. He definitely went in. So, um, so once that clip went viral, DJ Envy decides to respond back to Gucci Man, and this is what DJ Envy had to say. Y'all go ahead and check this out. So DJ Envy posts a picture with his dog. This is the dog that Gucci was talking about, and he says, "Me and my dog." Well, Atsy the God gave me a heads up when this interview was done, and I told him, play it. This isn't the first time I've been threatened by an artist, and it probably won't be the last. i never been slapped or snuffed or jumped before, so not sure where that came from. But funny by all means. At La Faire, 1017 was never banned from The Breakfast Club. When asked, would I do an interview without ye? My reply was, I will not do anything unless you clear it with my coworker. We call that writing for your team where I'm from. And he's upset because my coworker defended herself. Never in a million years will I tell my co-host what to say or what to not say. We share that platform. When Gucci did that post about ye, she defended herself on The Breakfast Club. He's mad because I let her do it. I I have never ran from a conversation in my life and my dog is excellent. Anyways, I heard some lies and wanted to address it. Back to enjoying Paris. 
So that is what DJ Envy had to say about the situation. So then this is where things got really messy. Charlamagne was caught liking a tweet where somebody was dissing Angela Yee. And basically the person was saying this. Damn, Atsy the God is just a co-worker, not a friend. LOL, at Angela Yee and at DJ Envy, y'all have been warned. So he ended up liking that. And then what happened as of yesterday is that Angela Yee unfollowed him. So this seems to be the end of The Breakfast Club in my eyes. And yesterday's show was very, very awkward. And a lot of people were talking about this on social media. You can tell the energy, the vibe is not there. But I'll go ahead and check this out really quick and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Yeah. Like fr last week, Friday, when I tell you I passed out, I passed out. So... There you have it. Now, uh, we do have front page news on the way. We'll talk about Good that nine-year-old. You know what? I need a new bed. You We're going to give them, you guys, an update on what happened. A nine-year-old boy who was arraigned on five murder charges in that fire we told you about that he started in a mobile home. So we'll tell you what's happening with that. Yes, I need a new bed, man. My one-year-old and my four-year-old be kicking my ass in the middle of the night. Like, they literally come in my room and make me want to go sleep in the... Tell us about it. I never brought it up. But don't ever try to act like you didn't do it. You did. You did. She said you, she feel like you disrespected her. She disrespected herself. She disrespected herself. That's what she did. She just made a big deal out of something when in a big deal. I don't disrespect herself. Now she embarrassed. And now whoever her dude is, he like, damn, you been a freak like that? You tell the dude you want him to hit the bottom of that motherfucker? Deep? You want me to hit the bottom of that motherfucker? <laughs> What's going wrong with you, man? That hoe want me to hit the bottom of that motherfucker, ain't it? That hoe said that shit deep. <laughs> They about to be mad at 12 me. 12 foot, they motherfucker, ain't the man. They gonna be mad at me. Bottomless pit, man. Man, God damn, that's just like me saying, hey, can you handle it this big now? Oh, it's deep. Oh, is it, is it deep? What you think they gonna make a man do? What you what you telling him that for? You tell a man your pussy deep for what? You just throwing it out there? So you do this all the, all your guests you talk to, you just say, hey, you know how the Asian girls are, right? They got fat pussy, deep pussy. All right, so you guys just saw the clip of Angela Yee and Charlemagne the God. You can definitely tell there's some, you know, tension there. And my thing is this. They've been on this breakfast club for, I want to say, almost probably eight years now. You know, for quite some time that I'm sure they've gotten to know each other and become like family. So if something as simple as this interview can cause you to unfollow each other or cause Charlemagne the God to like a tweet like that, then to me, I feel like there was already a fracture in the relationship anyways, because personally, that's not a tweet that Charlemagne should have really been liking. And Angela Yee shouldn't be unfollowing him on social media if they really had that tight rapport with each other, okay? Now, let me go ahead and say this. Um, so now let me go ahead and say this about the Gucci Man interview, because what I hate about this situation is that out of that whole almost hour and a half interview that Charlemagne did with Gucci Man, the only thing that's gone viral is the fuck shit. It's him going at DJ Envy and Angela Yee. And I understand why it's gone viral because it's salacious, it's drama, and that's what sells, okay? But I actually sat down and I watched the entire interview and I loved it. Okay, a lot of people were mad at Charlemagne and was saying, oh, Charlemagne's disloyal and he was laughing with Gucci, you know, when he was dissing Angela Yee. You know, I went into this ready to snatch Charlemagne's eyebrows off because he has no damn hair. And that's not what happened. I'm like, okay, am I watching the same interview that people are mad about? I thought Charlemagne the God was very professional. I really enjoyed it. Y'all know I will call out Charlemagne on his bullshit when he's wrong. In this situation, I thought Charlemagne the God handled everything professionally. He was not laughing like he was clowning his friends. You could almost tell like that was a nervous laughter because he has a loyalty to the Breakfast Club. He does have a loyalty to, you know, Angela Yee and DJ Envy. So you can tell that he was, you know, visibly uncomfortable, but he still had to keep his professionalism, which he did. And he even tried to soften the situation by saying, well, hey, let me try and connect you guys. Maybe y'all can talk. Gucci Man was like, no, fuck no, I'm done. I don't want to have nothing to do with them. So I don't think Charlemagne the God did anything wrong. He can't control what comes out of Gucci man's mouth. You know what I'm saying? This was an interview and this was a chance for him to get a big interview because we haven't had a sit down interview with Gucci man since 2016. And what I really loved about this, the stuff that's not going to go viral because most people didn't even bother to watch it is Gucci man said so much real shit. And I'm so proud of that brother's growth. That's what needs to go viral. This man denounced criminal activity. He kept the real about what he went through in prison. He kept the real about the drug use and how it really messed with his mind. 
You know what I'm saying? I remember when he got out a few years ago and I was praising him for getting out. Like, you know what? I hope Gucci gets it together. He's lost weight. You know, only time will tell. And a lot of people knocked me for saying that I was happy that he got out of prison. But at the end of the day, you got to put respect on Gucci's name. Okay, a lot of your faves were discovered because of Gucci, man. He has an eye for talent. He has worked with some of the biggest names in the industry. In the industry, and I talked about this a few years ago when he got out. So I will always have a level of respect for Gucci, man. And you know what I'm saying, the music that he's put out there, the people he had that he's worked with. I lived in the South for 10 years. And when I was living out there, that's when Gucci, man, was popping. You could not go to any club, listen to the radio without hearing something that Gucci Man had his hand in, okay? And I also feel like another thing that really pissed him off is the fact that they played that OJ the Juice Man clip where he admitted to having sex with Keisha Kai Orr. Now, that is his wife, you know what I'm saying? Um, DJ Envy gets upset anytime anybody brings up Erica Mena. So why would you do that? Why would you guys play that clip of somebody talking about sleeping with his wife? But another thing I really enjoyed about the um, interview that Gucci Man did was how he talked about being loyal, being faithful, how he spoke so highly of marriage. He said, I have the baddest wife in the game. I will never cheat on her. And regardless if you think that Keisha Kai Or is bad or not, it doesn't matter. That's his wife. He's supposed to think very highly of his wife because he chose to marry her. And I like Keisha Kai Or, and I think they're good together, okay? So I think the fact that he spoke so highly of her, he spoke so highly of marriage, he said, as men, we need to stop taking chances, running behind $2 pussy that doesn't mean anything when we have a whole wife at home or a whole woman at home that's holding us down he spoke some real shit instead of him saying you know what i'm saying be out here you know trying to get as many bitches as you can and you know fucking everybody who comes at you gucci man is actually being stingy with the dick okay and i respect him for that it's the truth and they said some real stuff Charlemagne even said that that when his dad cheated on his mom and they ended up divorced his daddy ain't been right since okay i can think of a few men who cheated, went through a divorce, and they ain't been right since either, okay? Fuck with them. It's like a little feeling. You get a little piece of pussy, then you fucked up your whole shit you got going for a little $2 ass girl. It ain't worth it. Yeah, I saw that with my pops. My pops tell me all the time, the one thing that he regrets is, is leaving my mom for another woman 20 years ago. Listen, my dad and my mom got divorced when I was 16. That's Soon as she divorced him, man, he fell off so bad. Yes, he fell sir. off like wet weed, yes, man. I'm talking about <laughs> over with, man. And that's that, just watching that, like, man, I don't want to make the same mistakes my father made. And you yes. don't want to hurt your woman like that. Because you fail. If you fail, if you, you know, if you, I don't care what you say, you get divorced, you have failed that marriage, you failed that something. You know, I ain't get started this shit to fail. My shit ain't going to fail. Right. I'm, you know, I'm going to do what I, you got to be responsible, man. Don't do nothing you can't, don't commit to nothing that you ain't going to be responsible for. If you take a job, do the job. Do it with, do it with effort. Don't take no job and then you don't feel like you want to go to work. Don't work there. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm, you know, me, everything I do, I just like, I want to come. I ain't going to do no interview with Charlemagne if I don't want to be interviewed. If you don't want to be interviewed, you feeling bad, don't come. If you don't want to be with that girl, you feel like you get married, like, everything you got to be, just be self-aware, man. That's what I be telling everybody. Push yourself to be super self-aware. Be honest with yourself. Be brutally honest with yourself. Don't put no cap. Don't even put no slang. I don't even like the cap word. I'm, I don't know why I'm saying it. It's like, just be honest with yourself. Tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Don't be cool. You know, cause a lot of you, they, everybody want to be cool, but they lying to themselves. Right. So it's like, how you, how you, you so you think you're so slick, man, and, you, and you're a fraud. You know, you should be honest with yourself. But what you're doing is cool. Like yes. growth is cool. Evolution is cool. Being faithful to your girl is cool. Your wife, like that's cool. Yes, I see the, I see Will Smith. I see, you know, Ice T, E Forty. You know, all these artists that had longevity in the game, man, listen, I salute them because I've been listening to Ice-T, I've been listening to LL, I've been listening, so it's like, damn, it give you, it's like we see, hip hop, they showing you everything, what you can do now, we seeing the stories, we didn't see people went from 20 to 40 to 50 to 60, we can't say that we ain't seen it now, so you know you can do it. Absolutely. It ain't like no, man, you can do a bunch of stuff, you can own a team, man, listen, these people gonna, if you got, you got so much influence once you pop it, man, you can leverage that to do everything, you know what I'm saying, so it's like, you got to value that, man. It's, being a rapper right now is like the best time ever. So, I mean, they were speaking some really, really powerful stuff. And I hate the fact that that just went over a lot of people's heads, okay? He spoke some real shit. And his growth is amazing to me. 
He took personal responsibility. He apologized. He said, I apologize behind the scenes, but I have no problem apologizing publicly. He addressed the situation with Migos and them. He was sincerely apologetic, sincerely humble. I really enjoyed the interview. That was probably one of the best Gucci Man interviews I have ever watched. And I watch a lot of Gucci Man interviews. He was just, I mean, it just showed so much growth and how far he's come in not only, you know, the rap game, but in life. The fact that everything in that interview is being overshadowed by the Breakfast Club drama to me is sad because there were so many jewels in that interview, okay? You have rappers like Snoop Dogg perpetuating this bullshit ride or die culture, okay? And telling black women to, you know, hold down, you know, druggy men and men who ain't on anything because he may turn into a Gucci man. But then when you have Gucci man in this interview and saying, no, we need to be faithful. I didn't get married to get a divorce. I didn't get married to fail. That's the stuff that we need to teach to young boys. That, you know what I'm saying, that they should always strive for marriage, always strive to look for a wife instead of a bunch of damn jump-offs and babies' mothers like Future. He was saying some real shit, so kudos to Charlemagne the God. I will always give props when props are due, okay? Kudos to him for an interview well done. He had a wide range of questions. It was a really good interview. I do not think that he threw his co-host under the bus. I don't think that he disrespected DJ Envy or Angela Yee. But as a professional, you have to go with it. And that was an artist being real in that moment. And Gucci Man has every right to feel that way because at the end of the day, was he lying? Was she not flirting with him on that show? She was. And I think maybe she's embarrassed because on the um, Breakfast Club, she has a certain persona. On that platform, she's more subdued. She's more neutral. She's more cutesy-wootsy. But on the lip service platform, all they do is talk about peen and dick and sex. And you know what I'm saying? She's more ratchet on that show. And that's fine because there's many facets to us. So I have no problem with either personality. But I think that, you know, she's trying to put on one air for, you know, the Breakfast Club and another air for another show. And she didn't want that to conflict. So when Gucci Man put that out there, that was messing that pristine Breakfast Club image that she has. And I don't think she liked that. But I don't think he disrespected her. Gucci Man never said he fucked Angela Yee. He said Angela Yee was on his dick. That's all he said. He didn't say that he had sex with her. You know, so he, he wasn't disrespecting her, but he got disrespectful when she tried to act like he was beneath her. I think that's when he got upset about the situation. So, you know, in my personal opinion, the fact that they're now unfollowing each other, there's all this, you know, animosity and tension. I feel like Charlemagne is getting ready to basically go solo because he has outgrown the show. And I think that's what it is. And I think because he's trying to get his platform propelled on YouTube and he's trying to, you know, create a name for himself solo that's why he reached out to Gucci man and honestly it worked because that Gucci man interview propelled him into a solo you know podcast type style and now everybody's checking for it the interview went viral the video went viral he's getting a lot of views and hits on it so in my personal opinion it was a good thing that he reached out to Gucci man it's helping him out so I personally enjoyed the interview. I took a lot of jewels away from the interview, and I'm so proud of Gucci. I'm proud of his growth. If we can knock black men when they get locked up and go to jail and they're doing the wrong thing, we can sip on tea and, and, and laugh at their misfortunes and, and go in and drag them. We can also give these same men props when they're doing the right thing. There has to be a fair balance in the media. We can't just drag, 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 be negative, spill tea, but then when somebody's doing the right thing, when somebody's speaking the truth, we ignore that. You know what I'm saying? We just love the negativity, but we'll totally ignore anything positive. And I'm not gonna do that on my platform. That interview was just a really good interview. That interview was a real interview, and I love so many of the points that Gucci Man made. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation concerning Angela Yee now unfollowing Charlemagne the God. How do you guys feel about all this drama? Do you feel like it was even that serious? And then how do you guys feel about the Gucci Man interview? Do you feel like the part about DJ MV and Angela Yee was too much? It was just too disrespectful? Or do you feel like, you know what, the overall interview was good, so it is what it is. He was just being honest. And then how do you feel about Angela Yee basically, you know, acting like she never flirted with Gucci and she never did anything, but then people have clips of her on that show flirting flirting with Gucci. Even though it wasn't lip service, she was still flirting with Gucci. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation concerning the Breakfast Club drama. Also, if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that thumbs up, honey. And most importantly, don't forget to hit the notification bell so that we can be down with the notification squad. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces.